Hello and welcome back. We're now officially done WrestleMania. Or I'm done Hobo Mania. I'd like to thank all of those. That watched my video. The end of Hobo Mania. That was when you saw this guy, Hobo Tom. Go to Sanford. It's my new hoboing territory. It's mine. I have to go urinate somewhere. Mark my new territory over there. I have to go hoboing soon. But first I have to make a video. And this is going to be Monday Night Raw. It was weird. I think it's because I expected one thing. And I got something entirely different. You can tell the fact. And I don't really like the way or like what they've done to some things. It might just be me. That's okay. This is wrestling. This is pro wrestling. Everyone's allowed to have their wrong opinion about pro wrestling. Um, I wonder if SmackDown is going to be any different. Because I know there was one call up. Which is kind of weird. I had kind of a rough morning. I had to work, but then I got woken up by the lawnmowers. And chainsaws because we had a fairly nasty storm and the neighbor's tree fell and they just decided to like bring lawnmowers out. What I'm more excited about, I'm more excited about the Southern Pro Lucha Libre. That's what I'm more excited about. That will keep me up. Actually, even more so than that, the one thing, and I'll get into this every so often. Well, coming to the Hobo Tom's home territory, AEW All Elite Wrestling, June 29th. Here at the Daytona One Center, I think it's called. Or it's Daytona Ocean Center. Whatever it is out there. All Elite Wrestling. And later I'll tease what the main event's going to be. So, if, again, if you ever want to meet this guy, Hobo Tom, get a shout-out. And possibly <laughs> help me make an intro video. An intro bump. That could be you. Because definitely I'm going to take off that, or at least take off some of that boy. Ooh, I guess it is getting late. I guess I haven't been up for a while. I did a lot today. So let's start with some Monday Night Raw. Let's see if I can keep this a fairly quick video. It is the WrestleMania. This is at, well, after WrestleMania, I'm kind of getting wrestled out. I'm probably going to take Friday off so there's no Jacksonville trip. Too much wrestling. But I'm going to see if I can get to the Daytona Beach show the following week. Because, again, that's right down the road for me. So that's pretty cool. So, well, with all that being said, all the business taken care of, let's talk about some Monday Night Raw with a superstar shakeup, which didn't feel like a shakeup, but they just kind of, like, had people show up. It'll be interesting to see what people say tomorrow, too. So it starts off with a stuff promo. It's like, yes, today's the show shake We're going to get some new faces here. Shane comes out, and then The Miz shows up. So The Miz is just following Shane. The Miz is going to beat down Shane. And and I miss it because I blink. But again, of course, Shane does his punches. Um, threw Miz over the barricade. And I don't know if Miz landed on like a bolt or something. He had a pretty nasty gash. It seemed fairly real because it was like along the side of the head. So I don't think he would just slice his head open like that. I really put a little nick there. Now he was bleeding though, and fairly profusely too at that. And then he grabbed the chair and started, and started swinging it toward, toward Shane. That's excellent stuff. That's the way I want to see Raw and our SmackDown star off all the time. And then we have our first match of the evening. And it was a eight-man tag match. And it starts off with... Oh, I got it. <laughs> Fly killer. Starts off with Ricochet and Alistair Black. And the tag... And the SmackDown... And the... <laughs> and, and, the, and, the and, and the Raw... Soon to be former. You'll know why. Tag team champions of Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder. 
versus the revival. Uh, and this is the only thing I hated. The Viking experience. Of War Raiders! Yes, war, 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 war. And War Machine. They need to think of a better thing than the Viking experience, though. Which is kind of ironic, because I was watching on YouTube when I was worked on. I was watching something about how they're cancel how season six of Vikings is the last show. It's like the last season of Vikings over on, I think, the History Network? It's actually a pretty good show. That was just weird. I saw Vikings, and now we have the Viking experience. And they don't have their NXT tag team belts. So I wonder what happened. I know they retained them at TakeOver. They dropped the belt? Some NX, NXT over at um, Full Sail? That's weird. Or are they going to still be NXT champions? I don't think there's a major NXT event, though. Coming up until TakeOver for SummerSlam. Could see a title switch hand to the house show? A Daytona Beach house show? Whoa! I don't know. We'll see. Then yeah, it'd be interesting to. I I don't know how that in the Viking experience. Just call them. Just call them War Raiders. Um. They're, well, the reason they're on Raw because Ro is married to Sarah Logan. So I know they like to keep couples together for the most part. But if you're only dating, they always say. So we'll see what happens. Um, this was a fun match. It was great ending wrestling. Trust me, the revival and, and the Viking experience, they do amazing tag team co combination, combo work, everything you would expect the heel tag team to do when they had a chance to double team. They did. It's always fun that way. Listen, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins, they have great chemistry. Aleister Black and Ricochet, they have great chemistry, but the four, you mix the four of them and it's, yeah. Uh, but it was, it was a, f I thought it was a really fun match though. I mean, Black and Ricochet, again, they take on that, that tag team. Kurt Hawkins could take a beating. And I hate to say, but Kurt Hawkins was there to, to eat the loss too. And the revival again is just so good. And um, eventually they do clear the, they, they do clear the ring. War, uh, Viking experience does. It took me so long to stop calling them War Machine. And then War Raiders. Okay. Now the Viking experience? Eh. And there's nothing to chant. Viking. 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 War. 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 Oh, war is so much better. So much easier to chant. But again, I'll tell you what. This is a fun match. I mean, I just thought they gave him a terrible name. And granted, the WWE can do what they want to do. I won't hold that 100% on them, but I will give this a surf and turf rating. The match was that good. Then the next match, we have Finn versus Andrade. Wait, wait, is, oh, wait, they're going to keep Aleister Black on on Raw, too. And Selena Vega's on Raw. They're going to split up Andrade and Charlotte, though. See, I know what you're, th I know, I know what they do over there. And, again, they didn't really announce, like, who was traded. They're, they, Andrade just showed up. The War Raiders just showed up. So, yeah, that was kind of interesting. A guy speaks speaking. Start, he just starts speaking Spanish, which is funny because they're in Canada. 
They don't even speak English. Stupid Canuck. Don't like Canadians. Anything I am racist against. I do not like. I don't care. Stupid people from America's hat. Canucks. But, oh, and then I think my one question I had, on a more serious wrestling note, I honestly don't I forget if Andrade Cien Almas ever faced Finn Balor in NXT. Something to ponder. Again, you can always comment or send me an email or subscribe if you think I'm posing good questions, and you can always email me or comment me the answer saying, How about Tom? You do not know you're wrestling. You are a fool. And of course, just give me the right answer. But that's interesting, though. I, mean, I thought of um, Andrade again. He starts speaking Spanish. I'll tell you what, it was good because it was at least different. It was a fun match. Um, uh, Finn's just one step quicker. Andrade hit those flippy knees. Those look really good. And then as Lena Vega tried to get involved, <laughs> and we really saw a high difference between Zelina Vega and everyone because Finn, when Zelina Vega was going to put her, so so Andrade was down here on the on the ring. We have the ring. So Andrade's here on the outside. Zelina Vega. And it tries to put herself up here. I have Slita Vega. Finn just jumps right over her and the top rope and lands on Andrade. He just cleared everyone. That really tells you how short Selena Vega really is. It's for you that. Um, eventually, Selena Vega did get involved. She had a hurricane of Finn to the outside. Um, that allowed Andrade to get the hammerlock DDT. And Andrade Cien Almas. Defeated Finn Balor. And this will be interesting because if this is the way they're going to push Andrade, have him versus Finn, even if they do, he doesn't need the belt, but just the fact that he's facing the Intercontinental Champion, that's that's a big step up there for Andrade Sinamas. And it was a good, fun match. Again, it's different. I enjoyed it. It's a surf and turf match. Then we have an Elias segment. Again, <laughs> plays the dirge on his guitar, which is always cool. And then he starts tearing apart the Canadian crowd. And again, Canadian crowds are weird crowds. They're very crowds. They do like their hometown wrestlers, as we shall see. But if they don't like you, they will boo you. And they will do, they just were booing the heck out of Elias. That was fun, though. Then, oh. It was later in the match that they mentioned Guy Lafleur. No. They said. Robert Richard? Or, uh, Rocket Richard? Was Robert? Or maybe it was a key Richard? Maybe. I forget. My hockey knowledge is kind of rusty. But again, Elias comes out. Uh, Ray Mysterio and plays his surge. Runs on the crowd a lot. Uh, Ray Mysterio comes out. Beats up Elias a bit. Eh, it, was, it was okay. And then Lars Sullivan just, just after Ray just like tried to annoy him. Just tosses poor little Rey Mysterio around. Breaks, breaks Rey Mysterio. The sit out power bomb. He just breaks him. That was that. Then the next match it was um, Rude and Gable versus versus Uso Penitentiary, which was really fun. I do like the fact that I, I like it. They're doing things a little bit more spontaneous than having kind of a draft room. So the Usos come out, get a huge pop. Wow, I'm freaking yawning today. Um, again, Gable's collegiate wrestling, I will mark out for that all the time. That's 
Root is a smart heal. He knows how to use, again, he knows how to use the ring to advantage. He knows how to use barricades to his advantage. Again, just like a typical heal would. Um, the Usos, I, uh, I think, I always forget. The one, the one got the hot tag in. And then it was a super kick onto Gable and a super kick along with the Simone drop, the, the um, uh, uh, snoot, snoot kid chopped to the throat. And then, I'll tell you what, Rude was on the outside, Gable was on the inside. One of them hit Rude with a super kick. And Rude is so good. The way he saw that super kick, he just like flopped right to the floor from the outside of the ring. That was really good. Um, they hit the double splash onto Gable. Yeah, no, really, the Usos win. And I'll tell you what, it was another surf and turf quality match. And then things kind of went south. So we have a moment of bliss with, with Alexa Bliss and Sami Zayn. I'll tell you what, it had to be for a good five minutes. Because I was going, oh, 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 oh let's go. And Sam, then Sammy would, would take a seat, and the crowd would just say, oh, 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 oh let's go. And, and then, it, again, referring back to his El Generico days, that's the one thing I'll give the Canadians. When they, when they love you, they will pour their hearts out for you. They hate you. Boo. As we shall see shortly. Was that? Oh, yeah. They, they turned them pretty quickly. Um, and then, of course, the, the El Generico. Ole, 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 C, C, C. C, C, C. Again, old El Generico stuff. It's still good stuff. Um, eventually he says, I hate Montreal. What's wrong with you people? Begins to run down the crowd. They were chanting in French. I had no idea what, what they were saying. I don't think Kevin Dunn knew if they should censor it out or not. It was in French. It's like, okay, I'm done. And they're like, and it was weird because it sounded piped in. But you could hear the good vibes song. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Hey. Goodbye. It's rather un Canadian like, so that leads me to think. Hmm. Does the WWE have post production skills? Or do they have on TV production skills? Equal to that of Hobo Tom. I don't know. We'll probably never. Who knows? Sure. They do. If, I think for next year's two year anniversary, you're going to see the Hobo Studios and see actually what goes on in, in making one of these ridiculous videos. Then EC3 comes out. Top one percent. He has a great song. Look at him that much. But then bronze music hit, and now we get the burial of EC3. Let's put EC3 back on the main event TV show, which is actually taped for Raw. I, you didn't hear that. But, of course, Braun just tosses EC3 around. It was supposed to be a match. I wouldn't even call it a squash match. Did I actually give it that? Oh, no. I was going to say, it wasn't that bad because of... I don't know. 
you know, because of what happened, because of who it was. It's been a long time since I've done this, but this gets a piece of toast. So again, they, it was another tale of two raws, except for they flip-flop things, whereas the beginning was really good, but the end, not so good. And that's primarily because, again, you had that post match, and it wasn't even a squash match. And I think only because I like EC3 and I think they could use him better, maybe that's why I really zonked him. Because EC3 does deserve it better than that. Then the next match we have Becky versus Ruby Riot. I kind of like Becky's new gear a bit. I think it's one of those things that has to grow on me. I like it better than her previous onesies outfit. This is okay. I thought it was going to be a one-off thing for WrestleMania. Or if they have to bring one bag with them, like, several cities? I don't know. I have no I have no idea how that works. So, I would think they would pack more than one ring outfit, because that must get funky. But, um, so, she faced Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot, man, she's changed her hair. It's a lot longer. I kind of like short-haired Ruby Riot. Heidi Lovelace. I don't know. Every so often, WWE does things that, that blows my mind. Not in a good way, either. Yeah, but this was a good match, though. Um, again, pretty classic women's match. Uh, a Becky against pretty strong. Ruby Riot's pretty good. Um, a lot of brawling between the two of them. Which is good. Eventually, Becky does get the disarm her on Ruby Riot. Of course, the Riot Squad have to interfere. Liv Morgan and yes, Sarah Logan. It's called Liv Tyler. Get people confused. But yeah, so so then she, uh, she dispatches of both of them. Gets it on a second time in the middle of the ring. Ruby Riot. I guess predictably taps out. And then she does the Bexploder to both Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan. She clears house. It was okay. Nothing terrible, not good. And it's a ham sandwich. Then Natalia comes out. Starts to cut a promo. You know, it's Becky. Talia's just like whiny Kmart mom. I want to. I I want to speak to your manager. I am the manager. Get out of my store, you lousy, stinking, cheap customer. Son of a bitch. What the hell is wrong with these people? I well, I want the number two corporate here. Call them. My name's Hobo Tom. And tell them Hobo Tom told you to call. Um, and then Natalia faces Lacey Evans. Now he's still good. Um, and Lacey, her skills have improved, I guess, from the last time we saw her, which was, I guess, the Royal Rumble, really. But when she's been in a, I forget the last time she was in a singles match. I think last time she was in, in, in any kind of singles match, she was part of the Forgotten Sons in NXT. And she was more like their val more female valet thing than wrestler. So, again, I was never that high on Lacey Evans. I've seen her a couple times in NXT. Never did anything spectacular. Had the woman's right. Again, um, unless you like do the whole theatrics with a heart punch. <laughs> The guy sells the heart punch really terrifically. I mean, unless you're the big show and have like like hands like the size of like both my hands, both my axe handle hands combined. I mean, I don't see it being that great of a finisher. 
But she did that the, the, uh, double jump moonsault, which is pretty cool, where she goes from the... She jumps up to the second rope, and then jumps to the top. Kind of, yeah. She climbs up to the second, twists, jumps, does, does a flippy moonsault. That looked really good, though. However, she applied the Taz mission. I know what the Taz mission is. It's a half Nelson, and then you grab that guy's arm and pull her across. The Taz mission was the killer finisher move, the Kata Hajine, and that finished off the whole universe in ECW and had a reign of terror in WEW. And I hate the fact that Lacey Evans does it with like, oh, oh. No, you have to sink it in there, cinch it up, and put him to sleep. Damn it. Hate it when they take old fin they take finishers and they wussify them. You heard it. I just made up a word. I called it wussification. I have to use that. I don't like the way that sounds. The wuss. I don't know, I have to do my hoboing around one. Get, get that aluminum. But it was an okay match. I mean, the thing that saved it was, was the flippy, jumpy, top rope moonsault by Lacey Evans. Does nothing for me. Does nothing for Lacey Evans. It's a ham sandwich, folks. And I probably missed a segment or two. I apologize for that. I ordered some pizza because it's the last day of the Pizza Hut five ninety nine deal. Okay. Pizza for five. Pizza for six bucks is always good. Then you have the main event of Bobby Lashley, Baron Corbin, and Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. And the phenomenal AJ Styles is in Raw. That was good. Although, with everyone else combined, it was only so good because it was a six-man tag event. Um, it was really fun. Um, Rollins and Reigns definitely showed the fact they were tag team partners together. Uh, Lashley's just a brute. Drew's super brute. Baron Corbin is an up brute. It was fun. Um, AJ Styles, he got kicked in the head by Drew. Again, AJ Styles can do no wrong when it comes to selling. It's it's really good. I guess I just don't know what they're gonna have. What are they gonna have AJ Styles do though? Is he eventually gonna go for the title? And which title would it be? AJ Styles could sell it for the Intercontinental title. He could just say, "Yeah, I'm gonna cruise with this for a while." Eventually, he could go against Seth, or if Drew takes the belt off Seth at SummerSlam. AJ Styles can, in theory, again, the, the David versus Goliath wrestling story, take the belt off of Drew, and that would be really fun to see. Actually, that would be really fun. Um, AJ Styles is still good. AJ Styles can still fly. He hit the phenomenal forearm. Oh, it, Seth does that suicide dive once too often because finally someone just realized, you know, if I, catch, if I step to the right and just punch him, I'm not going to do that. Of course, he's going to hit it anyway. And then, of course, everyone had their kind of finishing moves on the outside, which made it a little more spectacular. Eddie Styles finished off, I think, Baron Corbin. I think it was Baron Corbin. With the phenomenal... What was it? What was it Bobby Lashley? I forget. I know, Eddie Styles did the phenomenal forearm match over. Yep, that was pretty good, though. Again, with that, it was a cheeseburger match. Again, hard for any of those people to really screw up a match. Um, it, Raw was just a really weird show. I can't say it was bad. I can't say it was really good either, though. It just didn't inspire me to walk. I mean, the first half was amazing. That really got to the Sami Zayn stuff. I'm like, okay, Sami Zayn's great. And then they started to... Um, I heard the, the the goodbye song and I'm, I'm like, wait, that they don't they don't speak what what? It's fake. Is wrestling is professional wrestling fake? 
That was raw, though. Kind of in a nutshell. I'd like to thank everyone for watching again. You can still catch my videos if you go to my YouTube channel. I put on a bunch of live shows whenever I can. Uh, mainly of WWE, but of NXT. And I might do Defiant. I have to figure out that on Wednesday. Wednesday is a weird day for me because I work all day. Then normally I take my nap, so I don't know. And, and, and it's also English time, too. So I have to figure out meantime, I guess. That's weird. Well, everyone else have a good night. Bye.